Hey, everybody. My name is Ian Stone, and I'm going to be doing a presentation today for everyone on uh, RCC RCOs and a person centered recovery oriented system of care. I'm going to share my screen here, and then we will get underway. <clears throat> Okay, so let's get started. Um, hey guys, so again, my name is Ian Stone. I am the uh, project manager of the Palm Beach County Hub, and I'm really excited to do this for the Recovery Leadership Institute and do kind of a, a walkthrough of RCC RCOs and a person-centered recovery-oriented system of care. Um, we're going to be going through a lot of stuff, and it's going to be... Um, pretty extensive. And so I hope to try to make it easily enough to digest for everyone. Uh, I want to make this so people that are engaging this material for the first time uh, are able to access it and get a sense of what do we mean when we say RCC, RCO, and also what is a person-centered recovery-oriented system of care and how these things kind of interplay. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get going. So some of the takeaways from today, uh, what are the principles that undergird the ROSC model? Uh, what is a recovery-oriented system of care? What is a RCCRCO? And how does the hub function in a more general way? Like what does practice look like here at the hub? How do we do our one-on-one -on -one engagements? And what menus or schedules of events and opportunities do we have that we are able to share with the group tonight? So I know lastly, the RCCRCO is a mechanism where we're trying to move our community towards a ROSC model. And so we're gonna get into a lot of this. Um, and just one note before we begin. So a couple of things came to mind as I was preparing. Um, one of them is about definitions. And so when we talk about kind of descending into the work we're gonna be sharing tonight, um, a couple of the components that I think are important for the viewers is that some of this is not going to be the experience of other people who are in the same space. Uh, there is a lot of cultural distinctions that play for RCC RCOs, uh, both nationally and also locally. You're gonna find different RCC RCOs focus on different ways of serving, different uh, perceptions on different issues, but they all have a lot of things in common. So I don't wanna speak for all RCC RCOs, a recovery community center or recovery community organizations, but I say all this to basically say that this is going to be my experience from engaging at the hub and engaging uh, commu recovery community centers, both locally and nationally, and also trying to give the people that will view this some of the things that aren't subjective. There are going to be ones. And so some recovery community centers and organizations look vastly different. They function vastly different. But there are a lot of things that they're all going to share and they're all going to have in common. And I want to try to highlight that when we get into some of these notes. So I just want to add that as a little bit of a, a disclaimer, that if you found something in this related to the way we function at the hub that may be different than a recovery community center or organization, the whole point of this is that these spaces should represent the community in which they're serving. That is kind of a universal understanding is, is that if these want to be authentic, and they want to be true to the mission vision of what was outlined um, specifically in a lot of the SAMHSA documentation related to RCCRCOs and faces and voices of recovery. Um, a lot of it is going to be able to be teased out by the needs of a community. And so at the hub, we at, I work for the Palm Beach County Hub. We hope to represent our community well, and we'll be able to get into that in a bit here. So let's begin. Okay, so the word recovery in general, I think it's important as we start to descend into the day to day one on one kind of boots on the ground work. It's important that we start to think about this word it's we talk about it a lot. And this is really going to be the undergirding principles that allow us to start to move closer to being effective in helping people in their recovery, bolstering it, maintaining it, and establishing it. So when we think about the word recovery, a lot of things come to mind. Uh, and I, I'm a big fan of the SAMHSA definition, which is that it's a process of change uh, through which individuals improve their health and wellness and live a self-directed life and strive to reach their full potential. Uh, this definition has proven to be really helpful for me, especially when we talk about recovery in the RCC RCO space. 
we think largely about this idea that in descending from these definitions into a model and then into the space itself and then what we do at the space, it's important to have these things kind of cleared up. And one of them that I think is helpful is that in this definition, we're really specific to this idea that it's a process of change. Right. This is not going to be a binary state, either you're recovered or you're not recovered, especially in this space. This is not uh, necessarily a 12 step space, which has more strict definitions at times. This is really geared toward being as inclusive and able to serve the most amount of people as possible. Uh, so we want to really enjoy the benefit that SAMHSA has given us this definition that seems really helpful for the people coming into to my RCCRCO that I work for. Okay, so when we think about recovery centric, again, we're starting to build these terms out, um, person centered, self directed, strength based, a participation of family, friends in the community. So again, trying to focus on this idea, or this way of viewing recovery, uh, through these terms and functions that are going to be kind of the basis or the backdrop in which we offer services and try to help our community. Okay, some, some elements that are recovery centric. And again, we're just setting the backboard. Collaborative decision making, individualized services and supports, community based services and supports, uh, the continuity of service and supports, multiple stakeholder involvement, recovery community peer outcome and, and outcomes driven. Um, so when we look at some of these, I think one of the important thing we start to notice is, is that there's this emphasis on this idea of community. And when it comes to a lot of the SAMHSA terms and definitions that they have that we, we've used to undergird what we do, uh, we're going to see this emphasis on community. And I think that that's really one of the big uh, factors that distinguishes a recovery community center than other models of offering services. Okay, so sticking with the SAMHSA definitions, we have recovery-centric guiding principles of recovery, uh, and these are the, the, the backbone. This is a lot of how we function and the things that are, are uh, the legs in which we stand on, right? These are the way we move. These are integral to being able to hear the voice of the needy in our community and being able to serve those effectively, uh, especially if we can't even agree on what we're doing. It really is hard to guide someone out of something into something else if we don't even know what better is. So we think about hope, person-driven, many pathways, holistic peer support, relational, cultural, uh, addresses trauma, strengths, and responsibility and respect. So these, again, are some of those undergirding principles. Um, okay, moving on. So this is kind of a systems of care model. So we're getting these big definitions and we're moving into this system. Uh, and this is a really helpful kind of visual in terms of showing how these things overlap. We have these definitional elements of the mission of recovery-oriented systems of care. We have these system elements, which are outlined. I'm not, I'm not gonna read all of these, but someone can pause and kind of look at this to see how this system functions in terms to bring about the best outcomes related to individuals that are trying to access uh, an increase of recovery. And so access, quality, and effectiveness is going to be the goal of the outcome, okay? So person-centered, recovery-oriented system of care. So this is important because, again, we're moving from the descending mode. We're, we're looking at definitions, and now we're starting to look at the model that would allow for the recovering person seeking help to really flourish and get the best chance at sustainability that we can find. So recovery community organization centers, they host activities, services, which are led and driven by uh, appropriately trained volunteers and peers. All pathways of recovery are respected. They provide peer recovery support services to promote recovery in supportive environments and access trainings. So a big focus on this idea of social, educational, and recreational opportunities uh, and information about other modes of treatment, recovery, support, and resources. So when we think about kind of getting into why are we building out this idea, what is this all pointing toward, uh, we're starting to head there now in terms of like what we're looking at. Okay, so this is really the big question. Um, What's all the buzz? Like, what is this hype surrounding RCC RCOs? Why is it that we hear about them constantly? Before I got in this space, uh, I was I was new to this language. And when we think about recovery community organizations, recovery community centers, I think the reason that it has so much buzz is because it checks more boxes than any other approach that I can think of. 
And so what do I mean by that? I think it checks a lot of things that everyone wants that's seeking help. So it's inclusive um, for, for those who set policy and for those who fund things. It's fiscally prudent. Uh, it's evidence-based. It's person-centered. It builds up individuals. It's accessible. So they're typically uh, in communities and trying to make themselves more known. So it's built for and by the community. So we operate under the premise that people fight for what they help build. And we see this at the RCC RCO in which I work for. And it's a safe place. Um, I think, especially for many coming into the recovery space, I think safety is something that we largely forget. Uh, people coming in are terrified. Um, their entire way of thinking is now being threatened. They're afraid of losing something that has possibly worked for a period of time and isn't working now. They have problems on top of problems. Uh, and, and I think that the RCC RCO space allows for all of these things to be checked in a single space. Um, and I think that that's a really important thing as to why there's so much buzz. So before we get into some of the functional aspects, we need to make a distinction here between recovery community center and recovery community organization. Um, I'm going to give you a definition for each one. And as we talk about these things, again, there's going to be uh, distinctions nationally. Um, there are many RCOs that don't have centers, recovery community organizations that don't have centers. I think like one way to kind of tease through this is that the center is the physical space, so the brick and mortar, and the organization is kind of the uh, functioning aspect that allows that space to have fuel. It fuels the space and its functionality. So you can be an RCO without an RCC. You can be an organization without a center. And many places nationally uh, do not have centers. Okay, so what is a recovery community center? So the center is a place which is free from stigma that offers peer recovery support uh, to the entire recovery community. So this is important, regardless of pathway. Types of support fall within four categories, emotional, informational, instrumental, and affiliation. That means we have a space to provide everything from recovery coaching and peer support groups to job readiness, training, professional education, help accessing social services, transportation, to ping pong tournaments and cookouts. And I love that little add in. This is from the recovery uh, community of North Carolina, they gave this definition. And I just, I thought it was so fitting because it, we don't want to fit this center into such a mold where it's my version of a center versus your version. That's not the case at all. And to go back to the point that I made originally, this is always going to be um, most true to this person-centered way of perceiving recovery that when we think about this idea that a center is going to be defined by the people who are overseeing it, we've already begun, in a sense, to miss the mark. Uh, this will essentially be defined by those who are accessing it. The community itself is what makes it what it is. Uh, we look at a lot of this in terms of our contract. And to be honest, I, I love to share this, that we're funded to essentially here at the Palm Beach County Hub to have the voice of the person walking in the space be louder than any other voice. Any other voice that comes in here is not as loud as the person coming in seeking services. They are the ones that determine our community is what determines what we do. And then what is a recovery community organization? RCO for short is an independent nonprofit organization, uh, which is led and governed by representatives of local communities of recovery. Uh, these organizations organize recovery-focused policy, advocacy activities, carry out recovery-focused community education outreach programs, and or provide peer-based recovery support services. And this is uh, by William White, quoted in 2007. So we start to see a little bit from the organizational to the center. And these two, a lot of times, can be overlapped in terms of speech. So like shorthand, people will say RCC, RCO, almost as if they're the same thing. But I think it is important to draw a little bit of the distinction between the two uh, to best kind of share what we're doing and to also best um, represent kind of the national understanding of these two terms. So I, I just, I, I wanna be uh, true to what, what we're doing. Okay, so I'm not gonna read all these, but if anyone's interested, you could pause this slide. This is really, really, really helpful, especially 
for us coming into this space who want to get a better sense of the RCO, um, the RCO functional background, right? So this idea of building, advocating, assessing, educating, like these are things that are so essential to kind of the way we function, the way we maneuver. And this is by uh, White, William White and, and Taylor in 2006. So these are really helpful. And I wanted to add a little bit more informational before I move into the functional. Okay, so, and this is a small little helpful graph that shows this, um, these, these diagrams kind of indicate how the community organization functions within a community and then addiction treatment and other human service providers function in tandem with these. Um, and so this is another little helpful visual to get a sense. So when we think about the purpose of all this, like what is what are we doing? Why are we doing this? Why is there so much buzz again around these things, especially in South Florida, aside from uh, what I had said earlier about checking multiple boxes? I think, again, right, this, this sums it up. The sole purpose is to mobilize resources within and outside of the recovery community to enhance long-term recovery. Um, if we are not moving the dial toward more sustainable, accessible recovery outcomes, we are not doing our jobs well. Uh, we, that is the sole focus. We are here to help people with recovery. Um, and again, there are many different places. These are all uh, places that are uh, listed on the Floridians for Recovery RCO locator. Um, these are all different RCOs locally in South Florida and above. So the entire state is represented here. We see many organizations that I've been really fortunate to engage with, uh, pick brains of, and probably ask uh, redundant questions as I tried to tread the water of endless acronyms and trying to uh, suss out what is going on in this space, what makes it different than kind of the Florida model of treatment that I had been exposed to, uh, and then how does all of these other things fit into this way of understanding recovery community, recovery community centers, and then also ultimately the ROSC model. So these are just some of our allies and uh, RCOs that we have been really fortunate to engage with. And I just, I think it's important again to always highlight the uniqueness of each RCO in terms of it representing its community well. Um, so I just wanted to include this to show a little bit of the uh, distinctions. Okay, so uh, Dr. John Kelly uh, is a part of the Recovery Research Institute, received a large grant, and he is uh, conducting a long-term study on the efficacy. He, he's quoted saying, recovery hubs facilitating one-stop shopping in the accrual of recovery capital. And so when we start to think about this ultimate goal of trying to build up recovery capital, uh, we start to think a little bit differently about what we're doing, especially in this space, right? So let's talk about more boots on the ground. And again, descending from the definitions and the terms to a little bit of the systems to now the distinction between an RCC, RCO. And we're going to talk about the RCC, RCO called the Palm Beach County Hub, in which I am uh, employed by. Uh, and our, so our mission, our mission is to increase opportunities for community access to recovery resources. The Community Recovery Hub of Palm Beach County provides support and solutions for those living with substance use disorders. We empower, connect, and advocate for individuals and their families in all stages of recovery. And of course, the Palm Beach County Hub embraces all pathways of recovery. We work to fight stigmatizing terminology and strive to diminish stigma in our community. So with all this said, uh, I say this basically to add that our RCCRCO has a unique mission vision for our community, and I uh, we're, we're located in Delray Beach. We're right on the corner of Atlantic and Congress, and we've been here a, a little bit over a year now. So we've kind of gotten a sense of our space, our community in terms of functionality, and a little bit of what we're doing. So we're happy to report on this a little bit more uh, substantially than we would have a year ago when we were just opening up and getting a sense of what was going on in the day to day, especially when it comes to the boots on the ground, especially when it comes to how do we function uh, in this space? What does it look like? And then also, like, what are we trying to do better? Like, what, what can we do better to serve our community? Grandfield and Cloud define this idea of recovery as the volume of internal and external assets to initiate and sustain recovery from severe alcohol and other drug problems. In other words, recovery capital, which is our goal here is to build, is the total resources that a person has available to find and maintain their recovery. And I think it's important just to ask the question, um, can a person make a decision if they don't know what options are available? 
right? And I'll say it again. Can a person make a decision when they don't know what options are available? Can I order food on a menu that's not listed? Can I play a card from a deck of cards that I don't have? Can I make choices about my recovery if I don't know what choices are going to be presented? And I think what we're trying to do is trying to build out as many resources that the individual walking into the space with little or no hope is now given a plethora of options to make an informed decision about the way they want to start moving in their recovery. We want to inform and then empower and then connect. So what does the experience look like at the hub? Uh, if you were to just walk into our space, how would you, what, what would that be like? And I think that this is one of the uh, really exciting components of what we do here is we, we want people to feel greeted. We want people to come into our space and feel this warm welcome. Uh, we offer a drink, a cup of coffee, and we typically start to just get to know them a little bit. Um, you know, we're not in such a rush to just uh, troubleshoot problems. We're trying to get to know people. Uh, and yeah, we're happy to troubleshoot problems. We're happy to engage and roll up our sleeves and, and do what we have to to try to help the person coming in. But we really want to focus on that warm greeting. We want to focus on that uh, re the experience of making someone feel human again, um, getting them a drink, making them feel comfortable, allowing them to take a seat. Um, these are really, really big factors for us in terms of how we do what we do. The next thing we do with a lot of folks coming in uh, that are available is we engage in what's called a recovery capital index survey. So this is a survey that allows us through text messaging to get a, as quoted on the screen, comprehensive picture of a person's automated well-being using this survey. Uh, it's person-centered, scientifically validated to reliably measure addiction wellness, re regardless of treatment modality, recovery pathway, or substance of use. So this breaks down into a few domains, as you can see in the right. This is social capital, personal capital, and cultural capital. Uh, this is an instrument that we've been deploying since I started, and it has become one of the most helpful tools in terms of allowing me to get to know someone in a different way, uh, reviewing this measurement with them, and then allowing the voice of their uh, secondary narrative through this instrument to be heard. And I kind of joke as like an anecdote, if you came in uh, to a doctor's office and say that you told the doctor that your head felt funny and they said, we're, we're immediately gonna rush you to brain surgery. You would probably think to yourself, like, let's slow down a minute. Let's maybe a uh, test or something. And so too, if you went into a, a, a doctor's office and you had blood work done and they immediately rushed you into emergency surgery without connecting with you verbally, you would probably also be concerned or unhappy with the way you were treated. Um, the Recovery Capital Index gives us this agnostic instrument that's not reading into the person's story my biases, uh, my narratives, and my experience. And what that allows for is for this unfiltered uh, way of hearing someone voice the needs that they have that at times are not uh, even being stated in the verbal narrative. This is a mechanism that allows us to better serve the people coming into the space. So we use this RCI to measure uh, and inform our services on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So when you come in, it's a text message-based uh, software that allows you to just go through uh, 68 questions, and it, it goes really quickly. And the survey completion allows us to review with the individual coming in the space uh, what they're reporting. And we, we, we review this with the individual. We, we go through this with the individual, and we use the instrument to inform the way we proceed, coupled with the verbal narrative. And again, could you, um, the way I think best to describe this is that it would be like giving somebody a megaphone when they had never spoken before. Like this is giving an ultimate voice, it's empowering the individual and it's enforcing this self-directed decision-making, which is really a big part of what we're trying to build out in the. RCC, RCO in the hub. So one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, some of the things we do in engaging one-on-one -on -one is, uh, I don't, I'm not going to read all of them, but 
preparation for employment, job search, interview skills. We help with bus passes, bu uh, food stamps, budgeting. We help with some necessary clothing. We do like mock interview trials sometimes where we're able to walk through some of these things that may be tough to walk through on your first interview. Also just a safe environment. A lot of people need computer access to just kind of get things situated, um, be able to maneuver a bit comfortably in the space. And then also just trying to help people troubleshoot some of the more basic needs they have um, and just have a safe place to come. Also, we have a menu of opportunities. Now, these aren't necessarily one-on-one -on -one engagements. Um, what these are going to be are um, trainings that we host at the hub that allow for people to come in and uh, be able to work on needs that are maybe presented through the RCI. So the recovery capital index software, say, demonstrates somebody's having an issue with finance. Uh, instead of just simply saying, like, let's move into the space of trying to troubleshoot different personal needs, why don't we offer you like an official training at the hub that would allow you to engage with somebody who knows kind of the ins and outs of finance better than most and go through, you know, bank accounts, savings accounts, budgeting, um, all these things, allowing someone to feel more empowered and more self-directed. So this is toward, and again, at the, the bottom bullet there, viewed through the lens of building recovery capital and achieving long-term recovery outcomes. So we offer a variety of trainings and events, and this isn't something people have to do. This is, of course, the way we would view it as a menu. This is something that you could do if you find that maybe you need a little bit more assistance than a one-on-one -on -one could provide. And we have a number of social events. The Hub, uh, we, we build out a lot of our social events surrounding the uh, functionality of the space. So we have holiday events, uh, when people possibly are in Florida for their first time and they're far away from family and friends and, and they don't really know, they're unsure about where to go. We, we host holiday events. We had a large event recently for International Overdose Awareness Day. Um, we try to make ourselves as present as we can within the recovery space all over the community. And we try to make ourselves as accessible as possible by hosting a lot of things and always kind of having something people could jump on board with, right? We want to offer a lot of on-ramps to our uh, recovery community center. And so we allow for a lot of social opportunities for people to come in, engage. And of course, this is always informed by the needs of the community. So uh, we, we base what we do on what people need and not just what we think would be good. Okay. When we think about all this, I think to summarize what we're saying and what we're trying to do, um, engaging one-on-one -on -one with people at the hub is really the idea that we are going to start to move into one-on-one -on -one engagements in this kind of ROSC model in order to, uh, in this ROSC model is the ultimate goal, but engaging on a one-on-one -on -one basis, making those engagements the most valuable thing we do. Um, this is so important to us culturally, is that everybody coming in feels respected. Um, everybody coming in feels, feels very safe and uh, allowing one person at a time uh, for people to start to get better. As a community, we heal. And I think that as a community center, we're very proud of the work we do in terms of uh, trying to build this change within this space uh, to help as many people as possible on both a one-on-one -on -one basis, on a training basis, and on a social basis. And we really uh, think that we're moving ahead successfully. We've had many of these stories in which we measure a lot of the success. We're very busy in terms of the amount of people that we serve, the amount of trainings that we offer, and also the amount of engagement uh, in the community that we're able to do for being fairly short-staffed. We're, we're a smaller staff pattern here, and so we're able to try to do as much as we possibly can. And it's and it's one of the most exciting things I've ever been a part of. Um, I love this space, and I think that what we're doing is really effective, but also really practical. I, I'm somebody who was able to walk into this space and immediately see the efficacy of people coming and engaging and continuing to engage at the center. And just to add kind of a specific uh, narrative to all of this, we had uh, had a person come in the space today as I'm recording this, uh, trying to just say hi, check in and say hi to our staff. 
And what's funny is, is that this person is uh, well over a year sober now um, and had come into the space looking for shoes. They had no shoes. Uh, they had been struggling with being in and out of early recovery. Um, and this person was able to engage at the hub, access a bunch of resources, access a bunch of basic needs. And still to this day, um, we're held in this very high regard by this person who chooses on a day off from work to just swing in, check in with us, say hi, and let us know the new exciting updates of their life. And that I think is, is such a success. And it's, it, I, I couldn't have planned it uh, to do this little presentation on the RCC, RCO, what recovery community centers best represent. Um, and then to have this happen today, I think was just a really, really beautiful anecdote to kind of add. Um, I want to give a quote real quick because I think this is really helpful. And for everyone who's engaged uh, William White's material, I think that he is one of the best uh, pioneers in this space. We were able, when I got hired, I was able to do a, a long interview uh, with, with Mr. White and be able to speak with him uh, about what he's what his perception is, what uh, what the pitfalls are, what to be uh, leery of in this work. And I, I, I want to share this quote. This is from a, a, a presentation he had given at a conference called NET. And he said this, he says, we all have the potential to be recovery carriers. Becoming a recovery carrier requires several things. It requires that we protect our recoveries at all costs, recovery by any means necessary under any circumstances. It requires that we help our families recover. It requires the courage to reach out to those whose lives are ravaged. It requires that we give back to NET, the organization he's presenting to, and other organizations that helped us along the way. And it requires that in our new life, we try to heal the wounds we inflicted on our community in our past life. Uh, he goes on, addiction is visible everywhere in this culture, but the transformative power of recovery is hidden behind closed doors. It is time we all become recovery carriers. It is time we helped our community, our nation, and our world recover. To achieve this, we must become recovery. We must be the face and voice of recovery. We must be the living future of recovery. He says, so to all who are here tonight, individuals and families in recovery and allies of recovery, I leave you this message. Recovery is contagious. Get close to it. Stay close to it. Catch it keep catching it and pass it on. Uh, and I think that is a very beautiful way to end. Um, here's some of my work cited. If anyone wants to kind of nerd out a little bit and take a look at uh, some of the sources that we use to kind of pull some of these slides together and get some of the working definitions. Um, and also I'm gonna put my contact information here. And um, I am thankful for Hanley and the Recovery Leadership Institute to be able to do uh, this little presentation for you guys. And I hope uh, to be able to connect with you. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out. And we are so excited and we're so proud of the work we're doing here at the Palm Beach County Hub. And we look forward to hoping to connect with some of you as we trudge the road to happy destiny. Thank you for letting me share. And with that, I am out.